So we're about a mile or two from Central Business District of Sydney. So many great parks here. That Trump gravitates toward power instinctively. As he can't president, relax, guys. he dispensed with democratic norms in large part because oh, no. he did not understand them. Trump's authoritarianism is okay. So Trump's authoritarianism. I, I, I don't recall when do we have a more robust national debate. Right? Trump's many things, but uh, not particularly authoritarian. So self-aggrandizing, childish. Yeah, but uh, uh, how, how exactly was he authoritarian? You had all the major institutions of the country united in opposition to him. So, sore loser, yeah. Childish, yeah. Don't exactly see the authoritarian fascist. Is sub ideological. But that does not mean his style of governance defies theorization or a philosophical rubric. The chaos of the Trump presidency has given way to a period of rethinking on the right, the result of which is a political and intellectual infrastructure. Okay, so Trump was a fighter, right? He was self-aggrandizing, narcissistic, childish, but he did not allow himself to be intimidated. He was a fighter for good and for ill. So, I don't see a coherent ideology here. Determined to carry out his despotic impulses in a more systemized, and its supporters hope, victorious fashion. They may not call it fascism or semi-fascism, but this is only because the word has become a universally recognized slur since World War II. To most Americans, Oh, so if it wasn't a slur, then, then it'd be accurate to call Trump semi-fascist. I think this is absurd. Fascist simply means bad, and nobody self-identifies as bad. People imagine democracy and fascism as a simple binary, leaving them unable to acknowledge political systems that reside in the vast space between the two. Okay, so every form of working democracy has a component that is dictatorial, right? You see this during COVID when uh, Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan right, you know, shut down many rights as a part of an emergency response to COVID. Was she being fascist? Right, when, when John F. Kennedy almost went to war with the Soviet, Soviet Union, the Cuban Missile Crisis, were they being fascist? I don't think so. All right, so when the policeman arrests you, right, you can't opt out of being arrested, right? Is that, uh, is that fascism? I don't think so. Come on, mate. But this middle ground between Reagan and Mussolini is where the Republican Party's most influential ideologists and power brokers are consciously heading. Wow, middle ground between Reagan and Mussolini. <laughs> that seems a bit much. Semi-fascism contains many features of democracy, like contested elections and permissible criticism of the ruling party. Wait. How's that any different than what Democrats have done? They've contested elections. Does that make the Democrats fascist? But without the liberal guardrails that maintain democracy's openness and stability, such as a judiciary, bureaucracy, and news media that are empowered and motivated. Okay, so, and the Democrats were empowered during wars. They shut down many civil rights. All right, so Jonathan Chait is a good lefty, looking at these things primarily through the lens of the maintenance of individual rights. But in states of emergency, politicians on the left, the United States stripped away rights, freedom of the press, freedom of association, freedom to gather and petition the government.
check abuses of power. Thus, semi-fascism has a nasty tendency to slide into something more like the outright version, in which effective public opposition to the ruling party becomes impossible. Two decades ago, Vladimir Putin's Russia looked very much like Viktor Orban's Hungary does today. Ah, so is America 2022 a place where uh, opposition to Republicans is increasingly impossible? I don't think so, mate. All right, lovely little walk here by Sydney Harbour. good opportunity to take one's mind off the rising threat of semi-fascism. Baruch Hashem. And some observers still considered it a democracy, albeit one with challenges and limits. Today, Putin has seized... Every democracy has challenges and limits. You know, look at COVID, all these rights just taken away. Surviving in the city. This is just gorgeous. Why, why does the rising threat of semi-fascism seem to diminish in the light of this beauty? That's the central business district right ahead. So much power, but even though voters have regular opportunities to defy him at the ballot box, it's unlikely they ever will. Oh, the maybe Republican they're happy with Victor Orban. semi-fascist wing wishes to take several steps down this road. I watched the conference's attendees practically declare they would do so. Their methods and goals are ones that if embraced by their opponents would unquestionably and correctly be described as authoritarian or worse. Nobody expressed any fear that a right-wing state dedicated to endless political warfare might violate anybody's rights. The only rights they respected were those of Red America. Okay, so the left controls every major institution in the United States with the partial exception of parts of business and the military. So I don't really think you need to worry about uh, Republicans being authoritarian. Uh, isn't this more applicable to the Democrats? Love this shoreline walk from Watson's Bay to Rose Bay. The only risk that concerned them was losing. South Florida has attracted a huge collection of professional conservatives with national aspirations, some of whom were drawn away from New York and Washington, D.C. during the pandemic and almost all of whom gravitate not toward the former president in Palm Beach, but rather toward the state's governor, Ron DeSantis, the near-unanimous favorite 2024 presidential contender of both the movement and the party's establishment. 